So, uh, my name is Stefan Gustafsson. I work as a software engineer at DICE, which has absolutely nothing to do with PowerShell. Uh, we make computer games. I spend my days mostly coding C++, uh, but I also, they call me PowerShell at DICE because I constantly propagate that, well, there is a great language for making tools. And we have started like infecting their tool chains with PowerShell at every possible place. Uh, and that makes me writing quite a lot of modules. And what I'm trying to do here is just share uh, my experience, like what I have come to see works well, what makes it usable and what doesn't, what makes it easier to find problems early and what doesn't. Uh, and one of the absolutely most important things is making the output typed. I am a strong proponent for making classes. And make it, it's, you don't have to do anything fancy, you don't have to write methods, just easy written containers with the type and the name of the property. It makes it so much easier, everything just works when you do that. When you sort the output, well, if one of the properties is an integer or a date time, it knows to sort it correctly. If it's a string, it knows to sort it accordingly. Formatting. You saw one example where I formatted match infos to give them color. But that, that's an extreme, very advanced use of formatting. Uh, but the simplest form. Just tell when you say format table, how wide should the columns be? It makes so much more pleasant user experience when you do that. Test doesn't, like, I won't go deep into test. That's like a whole a week of its own. But just, you can't say that you should write professional modules without having tests. So I have to mention it. Actionable errors. Do you understand what that means? When an error happens, give the user enough context, enough data, to be able to make an informed decision. And, best of all, to correct it. If it's a path uh, that has caused an error, make sure that the target object of the error record contains that path. And make sure that the error ID of the error is sufficiently uh, detailed. We'll look at, it, look at it more on how I usually do it. Uh, do you understand, hands up, who understand path resolution and filtering? A few, yeah. Uh, you know that the PowerShell commandlets all have a dash path and a dash literal path. And if you say a path, it's take, it takes a glob expression that you resolve to the actual files. You, you say a path then, and, pa and PowerShell commandlets resolve these to, to actual files that you can work on. And there are a couple of nuances here. And filtering, you have probably all used to get child item, uh, dash filter or dash include. Use only these or exclude all but these. And writing your command lets so they act the same way as the one that's shipped with PowerShell makes for a very good user experience for the users of your model modules. Progress uh, and completion. Completion, that's tab completion, that's when you enter a com uh, command, help the user. It's extremely boring to, to write the URL. And if you know that your service uh, is using one or two or five REST endpoints, well, if you can tab complete to them, it's no problem. If you have to type them all in, it's a drag. Progress, that is something I learned at DICE at the beta of Star Wars Battlefront. We went public for the first time and got a million users playing the game for eight hours a day, it seemed. Uh, and we crashed maybe two or three times per user per day. Do the math. And uh, you see that I get a lot of crash numbers. And I was actually assigned to, to try to figure out uh, why a big class of those crashes happened. So I, I scripted a debugger with PowerShell and then nothing happens. Okay, how long will this take? Can I go home? Will it be, is it an hour? 
Is it three days? But if you can get progress on this, you know if it's time to grab a cup of coffee or if you should like take a week, a week of vacation. And, and that, that can be like tremendously uh, different in user experience. It's easy to wait on something when you know how long you have to wait. But just a, a, a dead prompt is horrible. That's what if I, I'm, I assume you're familiar with it. Do you know how to implement it? Hands up. Oh, a few. Yeah. We'll look at that. Uh, consistent naming and help. That, that, uh, you all know that. Uh, I'll probably just give you the links and, and so on. So I've written a sample module that will demonstrate this. It's a module used to uh, administer fish tanks. We all want to do it. This is actually an old joke of the, that Jeffrey made in the beginning of PowerShell that it's so consistent. So if you walk up to a new model you've never seen before, it's about a fish tank and I will still know how to administer it because I know what the verbs are to look for. And yeah, I can add a fish tank and I can... And this module I, I've set up uh, from uh, David Wilson's uh, samples. We're using uh, Saki and Pester and uh, Platypus is from one of the... Is it, what's that, Sergey? Yeah, one of the uh, former team members of PowerShell has written this module that allows you to write, write help in Markdown instead of in the mammal, uh, impossible XML dialect. Uh, so without any special tools, you can write help that is, uh, you can read it with, with a standard text editor and, and uh, you use Saki build script to compile it into the hop uh, hopeless XML format. So, make your output typed. See if I can get out of this. Shouldn't escape, make it. I killed. We'll see what happens. Something has happened with mine. I'm actually clicking here. Reboot. <laughs> Can you all leave the room and come back again and see if it fixes it? Yeah? I actually think I will do that. Stable. Okay. This is the simplest example of making a class to make your output typed. Uh, so the, the example is also from DICE. Uh, we're running a game and I want to start um, 
thin clients that run against this with proc dump attached as a debugger to them to capture dumps when they crashes. So I, when I create these uh, jobs, I capture the data in this little process data class. It has a process ID, that's an integer. I have executables and I have when it started to be able to, to see like uh, the mean time between failures and that kind of thing. And uh, you see, I don't write a constructor, I don't write any methods on it, I just create this type. Uh, and this turns out to, with this version of PowerShell at least, be the fastest way to create a class, like convert it from a hash table, just set the properties just as if you would have created a PS custom object. But this uses way less resources, uh, a third, maybe, uh, of a PS custom object, and it's a lot faster to create. This is the same, uh, but with a constructor. Uh, is Hands up, those who don't know what a constructor is. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more to write when uh, you write the class, but it's a little bit uh, more pithy when you use it. A little bit more expensive uh, compute-wise than which surprised me really, but there's an extra script block invoke uh, overhead when you create it with a constructor. It's extremely little uh, and don't care. I, I would make the judgment based on if like what you what style you, you like the most and if you think it's uh, nicer just to have the really, really small classes, or if you want the really, really small call to the constructor. And then we tell PowerShell about it. Output type, you all know about it, right? What does it do? Anybody? It doesn't. Actually, it doesn't affect anything at, run at runtime. Yes, it's helping IntelliSense. So PowerShell has this uh, concept of type inference to infer something. It's like to look at what you know and see if you can deduce something else from it. So it actually walks back in the pipeline and try to figure out the thing coming down the pipeline. Where did it come from? And this is like when you have this at the beginning of your pipeline, PowerShell can look at it and say, oh, this commandlet outputs this type of data. Then I can tab complete for you the properties of that method. So by doing this, writing your class, adding the output type, then for each where select, select this buggy so it won't, but it, it's fixed in the uh, later repro, but it isn't in Windows PowerShell. But that is one of my hobbies to fix those bugs. Uh, tab, tab completion is something I really, really, it makes such a huge difference for the user experience. So if I find bugs there, I fix them. But it doesn't change. It doesn't, it's not like a conversion expression when you output stuff. So it's only metadata to help tab, uh, tab completion. But it's important. Any questions? Anything? Yes, like, so if you want to really confuse your enemies, you add the incorrect output type. I do it all the time. Okay, format uh, files, how many have written format files? Very few, okay. Do you know anything about them? So format.xml uh, files is a dialect of XML that Microsoft has shipped with that is uh, read when you load a module and it updates format data inside the engine which maintains a table of the types that has format data. And when you comes through the output pipeline, it checks, oh, not, uh, well, if you don't say anything, it will go to out default, which will do uh, formatting for you. But in the formatting step, it will look at this type that's coming and see, does this type have uh, attached formatting data? If so, use that to get the correct uh, members, the, the correct width, etc. 
Because a lot of the time, you may have in, your cl in the classes that you created, some of the properties are extremely rarely usable. <coughs> like obscure things that's like once in a blue moon, you, you need it. But the rest of the time, you don't. That's perfect to hide from the standard format table output. Okay? Wow, it works now. So here's a little example, how it looks like. I won't go into this in detail, but as you see, you can set up the first a column header for a table. There's the same concept for lists, and you, you can just uh, search in the PowerShell home directory for the format files and steal by example. Uh, and in this case, I, I have just selected the properties that I want to output with certain widths. And you can do fairly crazy things with this, like take a, a collection on your object and enumerate it. You, you can do very, the help system is doing very advanced stuff with this. But I'm, I'm not arguing for doing the advanced stuff. I'm, I'm arguing for doing the least possible you have to do to make it usable. And that's usually just providing a good format table. I never remember uh, exactly this, so I, I always start with copying some, either one of my own previously uh, written or one from the system. Yes, it's a horrible way to express it. W one of the things is also, uh, Jason Shirk that we're talking about is uh, the guy who's written a very large part of the engine in PowerShell. Uh, the parsing ASTs, uh, compiler classes. Uh, he he's also thinking about a way to just attach uh, attributes to fields on the class you're writing, saying that if you format this as a table, use this with this alignment. Alignment is also nice to tag on there, that if you have numbers, right align them and left align text. It becomes much easier to, to, to read and compare and uh, so. To s Dollar PS commandlet, hands up. Who knows what it is? Very few. That's okay. That's interesting. When you write an advanced function, an, uh, an advanced function is uh, a function that has either a commandlet attribute, a commandlet binding attribute on the param block, or a parameter attribute on any of the parameters. If you have that, PowerShell will with uh, will. Uh, inject a variable into your scope named PS commandlet that contains the same methods as you would see if you were writing a commandlet in C sharp. And calling .NET methods is faster than calling commandlets. A call to a commandlet is actually an instantiation of a .NET class and a lot of calls to its uh, member methods. So if you can bypass that and, and directly call the .NET method, that will be faster. So if you do it very many times. Uh, I, I've gotten into the habit of using uh, PS command dot write error. And that class takes an error record, which is like the, the class that PowerShell used to communicate errors. It's a fairly rich type. And if you use that, fill it in appropriately, uh, you give your users a, a good way of, of uh, making good decisions from this. When I do it, it usually looks like this. I create a little helper class. This thing, using namespace system management automation. System management automation is a namespace where most of the PowerShell stuff we use lives in. 
So instead of every time saying system.management.automation.error record, which, which is the full name of that class, I can lift that. I'm, I'm using this namespace and, and just uh, use the short name for the class. It makes the, the code a bit more read readable. Otherwise, I would have, say, have to say systemmanagement.automation.error category and error record and all these places. So I, I make static methods. I name them. Uh, I give it the parameters that I need to p p uh, pass on to the uh, target object. Ha have you used target object? Did you know that the target object uh, existed on errors? So maybe I should start there. Hey guys, when I, when I start speaking about things that you like look like blanks on, <laughs> raise your hand and, and just you know I don't know what the f you're talking about, because. As I said before, like, if you don't know it, you can be sure that there are others who, who also doesn't know it. So th that's why we're here. So just, just like, keep asking questions. There, there are stupid questions, but I will pretend they are not. Okay? So, uh, maybe we can just look at... I probably have some error here. And we can see if it has. So if we look at the first error, th th this is actually something that is a bit. Uh, to see an error, you do a format list, show error, and sometimes uh, even force to be sure. And then otherwise, it will display you this this uh, red formatting of the error, but uh, with only a few of the, the properties. But you can take a, a deeper look, and you can see here that it has the target object. In this case, it was uh, the name of a debugger uh, that I tried to invoke, but I hadn't uh, the executable in the path. So PowerShell told me that, well, this went wrong, and this is what you had asked for when, when the shit hit the fan. Okay, and by using that, say that you you get an error that you want to process automatically uh, after the fact, and you had something that queried the different REST endpoints, knowing what REST endpoint will be important to resolve the error. Okay, you had you did a million operations, fifty of them went wrong, and you investigate, and you want to know exactly what went wrong and and where. And when you want to do like some manual patching to fix this, you need that data to be able to do it. So try to think like if you want to, to do something about this that went wrong, what data would I have to have? And yet another type where you can actually create, like if you need more than a path or a URI, maybe you need like the item you were working on and the rest endpoint you should upload this to. Well, create a little class with this error data and create an instance of that class and add it to the target object. You can cheat or be lazy and just use a hash table and it, it will work fine. But just make sure that you provide the data. Is it any more clear? Still very confusing? Good. Everything is proceeding exactly as I have foreseen. Uh, this is kind of boring, but it's important. When you publish module to the gallery, it's really important that you version your mod module semantically. You've all heard of about, about it, I hope? Semantic versioning? Or is it just a dev thing? No. But make sure that if you make breaking changes, bump the major. If you add new functionality, bump the minor. If you bug fix, bump the build. It makes so it's so much easier to take dependencies on modules and know when you have to to update something or not. Uh, 
Jeffrey talked about this earlier. Did you understand what he meant when he said that you should specify the functions, uh, like the exported commands from your module? Not really. We'll look at it. Uh, in the module definition, we have a couple of these guys. Uh, I actually don't really understand the people who made this. Yes. Uh, first of all, this is the first time I ran PowerPoint since last year I was here. So I'm extremely clumsy, like navigating around the presentation mode and understanding. But I can't fool. Why isn't there a timer in presentation mode saying you how long? Like, like everybody has this. Uh, you want to know how long time you have left when you're speaking. And PowerPoint, you will, somebody must have had that thought before me. Uh, Maybe you have to turn it on. Ah, yeah, that's not why we're here, but look at this. <laughs> functions to export. I've listed the functions that I want to export in the fish tank module. I've also exported a few of the alias or two aliases. I didn't want to create aliases for everything because some of the commands are so rarely used. So don't uh, like mess up the alias namespace with things that is very rarely used or unimportant. Don't be lazy, type those commands. But by doing this, when you type a command, PowerShell has this auto loading of modules. And it doesn't load them by default. But if you type a command that's in a module, and PowerShell only have to look at the module definition, and it doesn't have to load all, all the modules to parse all the content of the functions and find out what functions actually were there, you're a good citizen. You make life less miserable for the rest of us miserable beings. So, so, so don't make my day worse by not doing this. Add the metadata and make like everybody's life snappier and happier. It's, it's a little thing. You won't die if you won't do it, but everybody will be happier if, if you all do it. That would be great. And, and actually, uh, I think some of the build tools in Pisaka, for example, actually update some of those lists for you. Uh, so you, you can do a lot of, of this in tooling. But if, if you're not using uh, code or, or the build scripts, etc., it's, it's good to know why it's there and why you should use it. You know what? Is it okay with you if, if I don't switch? Do you see? Is it this big enough? Because then I want to go back and forth, forth between this presenter mode and... and uh... Yeah. Uh, pester, there's a lot of... To you all heard it. I hope you all use it. Do it. Uh, that's uh, like a whole session of its own or a week of its own, so we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Path processing and filtering. This is something that I actually, Joey, think should be a, a part of the PowerShell distribution. Something that, like, everybody should do this. PowerShell has internal methods for all their commandlets to do that. But have they exposed them to us module writers? Sounds like we haven't. Uh, as a stopgap, you can look at uh, this and steal, borrow, uh, use as you please. Uh, if you find bugs, tell me about it and we'll fix them and publish new versions. But this is, as you see what I do here, I create a path result object. It can either be an error or it can be a path. And 
To get to it, I check if it's an error. And if it's, it is, I call it, I call the method get error. There's actually a C-sharp version of this, which is type safe, uh, which you also can use. It's in, in the module power code. Uh, but if you want to have all the code, like if you don't want to download somebody else's code that you don't trust, you can just take the script and, and uh, use it as it, as it is. This works fairly well, so when I resolve paths, like these modules do, they create error records in the same way as you, that you saw with the previous uh, like the implementation here isn't really important. There are methods that create error records for certain conditions. I didn't find a path when I expected to. Uh, I found a path, but it wasn't unique. If I glob, then I expected, I used this in a situation where I should only resolve to a single file. For example, an output path. Save it to this location and you give a, a glob expression that should resolve to a single file, but it didn't. These are the kinds of things that path resolution should handle. And it should be done by PowerShell and it should be done uh, so everybody gets the same consistent user experience. So this is just a stopgap until we get that. But it's better than have to doing it yourself everywhere. So when you use this, uh, you include the module Let's see in the fish tank module here. This is something that it would also be nice to have a better abstraction. But you know about parameter sets? Have you used parameter sets when writing modules? Only a few of you? Or, uh, have a many done, but never, or, but you are ashamed of it and don't want to raise your hands? Yeah, cool. So parameter sets. We can look at an, an example. Let's do like this. So literal, literal path has the parameter set literal path. Path has a parameter set path. They don't have to be named the same, but it's convenient to be able to correlate them. And it says that these two cannot uh, coexist at the same time. They are different names. You can't use literal path at the same time as path. So this is a way of saying that these groups of parameters can be used together. And these other groups can be used together. And it, it helps get a, a good experience. It's, still needs work because it's really hard to say that uh, everything else is the same, but these two parameters are exclusive. You can't use this flag with this flag. So it's uh, hard to, some things are hard to express, but it works very well in most of the cases. So PowerShell knows when it binds the parameters, it figures out what parameter set you actually got. So I can check yet again with this, $PS commandlet variable and ask, okay, what parameter set did I get bound to? <clears throat> if it is path, resolve the paths as if it is globbing. Okay? And I get back results. The result may be an error or it may be files or both, maybe. Hopefully not. No, I don't think it can be both in this case. So when I use this, I go through them, and if it's an error, I write the error. Otherwise, I know it's a path. And then we come to the next step here. Filtering includes and exclude. So in the same way, you see here, I check if I should output this path. And that is determined by this wild card, card filter that is set up in the begin of the commandlet. And then I create this new include exclude filter with the parameters that I got from include and exclude. And as you see, I've been a good citizen and marked these as supporting wildcards. 
So I can say include those that is like hmm, star hmm. It isn't horribly difficult to write uh, a class like include exclude filter. You can take a look, but there's still some logic. And doing this over and over again to be a good citizen, to provide this consistent experience, that's a drag. Joey, maybe this is something that the PowerShell team should provide as a helper for all us module writers. Maybe we should. But once you have these, so this is the main point that once you have this, writing fairly advanced functionality isn't horribly difficult. So just by doing this, getting the paths, looping for them, writing errors, checking for filtering, we have done almost everything that the built-in commandlets or everything that they do to provide this consistent experience. And I'd be happy to just steal and rip and do whatever you want with this. I think it's fairly uh, well tested. Uh, I leave no guarantees. I'll be glad to hear if you find anything uh, that doesn't work or that should be working differently. But at least try it and see if you don't think that you get a better experience when doing this. <laughs> Do you know what they call that? Right back at ya. <laughs> Maybe somebody should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this was what I alluded to before. This has it hung? Is it doing anything? How, how long will it keep running? Uh, is anything happening? Progress. I'll show you what I mean here. The fish tank module. Uh, let's see, do we have any fish tanks? Yeah, we have some fish tanks. Let's go uh, clean them. PowerShell doesn't have a clean verb, but it has a clear verb. That's really, uh, yeah, yeah, that could be. Let's prob prob probably kill fish. Uh, <coughs> so, we're doing stuff. What's happening? Not a lot. Oh, crap. But wait, hey. I've got one minute and three seconds left. If I'm going to get cough, coffee, I've got to run. <laughs> this thing of actually getting how long have you been like, you see the percentage, you see the time. It's so useful for long running tasks. It's horrible when you use it on invoke web request and the web request takes 10 times as long as run because it's busy writing progress. <laughs> Have you seen, anybody else seen that? When you download a big file with invoke web request and it shows progress and it takes forever, the same file downloading without that goes like this, then progress is annoying. You should use it for long running tasks yeah, and we should, I think actually, progress has been fixed a lot too, to be faster in general. <laughs> you knew that by heart? Huh. <clears throat> to help you with this, we have the progress manager. That you, you create once, and then you, uh, you, you uh, call get current progress record and tell you what operation you're ab about to do. And it will do the rest. And at the end, you write the completion record, just to not to mess up the, uh, like if you have multiple uh, nested progress bars. It can, it can be kind of bad experience when somebody aborts an operation otherwise. 
usage of this is also we should I think David will be ashamed of me that I don't we had clear shouldn't I find clear fish tank here Sorry about this. Progress. Yeah. So this is how I use it. I create this progress manager, telling it how many fish tanks I'm about to clear. To do that, beforehand in the, this is a pattern I use quite often when I know that the data set is not huge. So to be able to get good progress, you, you need to know how much work are you going to do. Otherwise, it's really, really hard to tell you how, how much is left, right? So I often use this pattern. Uh, in the begin section, I set up a, a list of work to be done. In the process, I add to that uh, list of work. And in the end, I can use that. So I see well, this is the amount of work I have to do. And then for each uh, iteration in my loop, I say, I'm doing this now. I'm cleaning a fish tank in the living room or wherever. Niklas Vakna. Oh. Wake up in Swedish, sorry. Uh, finally, have you seen the try finally? Do you know what it does? So yeah, like if an error happens or if something goes wrong, the finally clause will be executed whatever. Okay? Whether it goes well or not, that will be executed. So that's a very good place to say, like, write the completion record. So my hope is not at all that you read and understand the code now. My hope is that this is something that you can, at home, uh, when you're not stressed and, and uh, nobody's yelling at you, take some time, look at the examples, try to figure out why did it do this, see what you can steal, steal it. Tanya? With right progress, I have to every time calculate percent complete and seconds remaining. So what the progress manager is doing, is doing that lifting for you which also gets me into the situation that the code I'm seeing here is much more declarative. It's not like littered with a lot of calculations of seconds remaining and process complete and yada, yada, yada. All you see is right progress. Tell them that this is happening right now. And if you're interested in how that is done, then you can go down a level and, and check out how it's done. And if you want to fix the calculation, you can do it in one place instead of in every function that is using progress. So I, I'm, I've created an abstraction to be able to fix things once, make improvement in one place, and having, uh, having it used from all the places. Yes? It does support uh, passing in a parent activity ID and uh, setting your own activity ID. So uh, yes, it should, uh, but I haven't tried it here. Uh, in theory, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have like a create sub uh, task or, or anything like that. No, it's really bare bone just do, doing the essentials. But like if you saw the, the implementation, you can see that I have methods here for getting percent complete and getting seconds remaining. And instead of having to do this every time, and especially seconds remaining, you see I have a stopwatch, I have like, when, when did this start? How long have I been running? How many items did I have? How can I project the remaining time from that? 
you don't want that everywhere in your script. So that is why it's a good idea to, to make a class out of this. Was, was that, did that answer the question? Yeah. Are you paying attention, David? My PowerShell session has terminated due to an error. Would I like to restart it? Yes, thanks. Uh, so we were looking at this. Yeah. So, so the thing is, for a fairly low price, you get good functionality with progress. It's easy to read, it's easy to use. And for long running tasks, you should definitely use it. This implementation or any other, but, but, but provide it. Completion, that's a fun thing. So if I want to add a fish tank of module You see, I don't want to write this. Uh, do you know how, you, how to create a completer? Anybody ever done it? The easiest way, I should actually just, uh, This is the simplest register an argument completer for this command and this path. Here I'm using search everything to find every fish tank file on my computer that matches the word that the tab completer is about to help me complete. The experience using that is saying import fish tank. See? So it automatically found all the fish tank files on my machine, and I could just tab through them. Compared to doing it manually, it's day and night in user experience. Uh, that was that because it used uh, search everything. So I didn't want to have this example having the dependency on search everything. So uh, the example in this module is using uh, the PowerShell 5 version of doing this, which is a class. I prefer classes because they use lexical. Did you listen to Bruce talking about scopes? Did you get the difference between a lexical scope and a dynamic scope? Dynamic scopes are evil, and I think they wish they hadn't made PowerShell dynamical scoped. If they like, could they do it again? Probably they wouldn't have chosen that path. When they made classes, they made sure they didn't have dynamic scope but lexical scope. So the variables in your functions that what you see. Do you want to have a variable in your function? You have to pass it to the function. Okay. It makes it so much easier to reason about your code and it's less error prone. And this is also how you implement the command line if you're doing it in a, in a native um, binary module in, in C sharp. You, you inherit from I argument completer and you implement the method complete argument. It gets the same if you remember the param block on the register argument completer. It got command like uh, import fish tank. It got a command, parameter path, word to complete. If I had started to type a part of the path or whatever, I'm, I'm depending on how I do my filtering on this. Uh, AST is when you're doing really advanced analysis of where in the pipe, like you can go up and see uh, what the previous commands pipe to you. 
like what is coming to you through the pipeline, you could do things differently depending on that. It's very rarely used. I've actually been searching for usages for it and really never come up with a good. And fake bound parameters, that is, say that you have, you want to complete methods from a REST endpoint. But depending on what endpoint you're targeting, you have different items to complete. Okay, different methods that you can do. So if you have started typing in like my command dash URI REST endpoint, and then you type uh, the, like the command you want to run against that. I can look at fake bound parameters and get the previous parameters you have passed to the command on the, on the command line and adapt my completion based on that. Also very advanced scenarios. So you don't have to go uh, that route. But in, in my case, a very simple uh, thing here, I'm getting all the fish tank models there is. And if the model name starts with the word to complete, then I add uh, that completion value to the output. You don't have to, like, as always, you don't have to understand this code. It's just know about the concepts, know where you can go look it up. Know that there are two ways of doing this. The script, the register argument completer, and the class way. And to get the class hooked up, to your arguments, you can put this argument completer attributes on the uh, yeah, in this case, you see I can complete the IDs. I didn't even remember I did that. But if I want to find the fish tank of a certain ID, well the system knows the IDs of the fish tanks in, in the system. So why not give me help with it? doesn't matter if it's a single digit, but if it's six digits, it really matters. I do that with our source control system. We use Perforce at ICE, and we're up to seven digit changeless numbers. And when you have to do something against this and have to type that by yourself, it's a drag. But I often only have like a set of three or four changeless going at the same time, and just typing through them makes it dirt simple. So knowing that you can do this, and implementing it, try with it, toy with it. And you will see that it, you get such an ex such pleasant experience when you have it. <coughs> I don't know if it ever was intended that you should be able to read the things that were behind there. Probably. I, it can't be important. So the, this is just a very, very uh, compressed sample of, of the concepts involved. You see the command binding supports should process. When you add that uh, parameter to the command bindings attributes, PowerShell uh, allows you it adds extra parameters. It adds the dash what if and the dash confirm parameter for you. You don't add them yourself, but PowerShell will. And you are, there's a contract between you and the engine then that you should call PS commandlet that should process. Should I process this? And depending if on the flags you have passed to PowerShell, what if for confirm? It will answer differently here, and it will print things differently for you. If you do this, you should also always provide a dash force uh, flag, so the user can say, I do not want to be bothered. I'm really sure I want to do this, so stop pestering me. Otherwise, especially, as in this case with my very important fish tanks, I've set the confirm impact to high. High means that it will query every time. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Are you sure you want? Yes. But if you pass fa uh, force, it will not. And the pattern you can use is, you see, if force or this. Don't even ask if it's forced. Seen it before? Anybody done it? A few? No? 
Yeah, help, consider Platypus. Write it help in Markdown instead of XML. Uh, I find it easier to not have, have all the uh, help in line in the scripts. Uh, your mileage may vary. I don't say you should use Platypus. Use whatever you find works best. I have tended to start using Platypus because I, I thought it be the code becomes cleaner and uh, for really advanced scenarios you can even uh, publish updatable help, but I think very few uh, does that. <coughs> and the most important thing, when you write help, provide examples. How can you use the commandlets in your module together? How do you use it uh, to do this? Because reading reference documentation really sucks. Okay, it says what this function does, but it's never in isolation. What I want to see is, okay, how does people use this? And not a very thorough description of what it does, but in context. Here's the URLs that you can go find the consistent naming. Summary, what we've been talked about. Any questions? A minute to go? Shoot. Uh, update type data updates type data and not formatting. It adds uh, properties uh, and methods to your type. And you can also set a default formatting, no, or default property, and there's... Yeah, you, you, can, you can select a set of properties, but you can say uh, alignment with... Uh, and you can say, like, behave like this when you are a list, and like this if you're a table or a customer or whatever. So the formatting system is much more powerful than, than the default <coughs> parameter sets. Sorry for taking your time. Go to get coffee. <laughs> Any more questions? Come up uh, and ask me here instead and let the, the guys who want coffee get it. <laughs> and thanks for coming. <laughs>